Just a few announcements this morning I'd like to share with you that um, there's a sign-up sheet for the women's group is going to go on a trip to see the play Ruth. There's a sign-up sheet. That would be a wonderful time for fellowship for you women, so make sure you get, a, get signed up for that. And our business meeting is going to be the first Sunday in March, March 3rd, so everyone's welcome to attend to that, but only members can vote. And on those lines, I would like to do a little bit of business real quick here. I need three volunteers to join the nominating committee. So can I ask anybody who's a member to put their hand up and volunteer for that? Sherry, Molly, can I have one more volunteer? Connie, thank you very much. <laughs> Did I persuade you to do that? <laughs> Are you volunteering? I'm not forcing you. Okay, God bless you. <laughs> um, we're going to have a special speaker this morning, so um, we're excited to hear uh, Reverend Richard share with us this morning and his group from Teen Challenge. But our scripture this morning comes from Psalms, chapter 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Thank you, Lord, for your promises, God. You are our stronghold, Lord. You are a shield about us, Lord. We worship you this morning, Lord, and we ask that your blessing would be upon our service this morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning to move in our midst, Lord. Move in our midst, Lord. Do what you do, Lord, to draw us closer to our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would touch each heart here this morning and that everything that is done and said this morning from the worship to the preaching to the closing would bring glory and honor to you, Lord. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. Praise you, Lord. We worship you this morning, God. Lord, we focus on you completely, Lord God, as we worship you with pure, clean hearts this morning. Praise be open that silence is the end. 
victorious God. Jesus to die on the cross. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. 
receive our worship this morning with these songs of praise. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Greet one another as you take your seats. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lord, we worship you this morning. We thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, fill this place, Lord. Move in our midst, God. Lord, as we worship you with these songs of praise from a pure heart of worship, Lord, we now bring our tithes and our offerings to you, Lord, as a sign of worship, Lord. I pray that you would bless this tithe, Lord, this offering, Lord, for your glory, for the advancement of your kingdom, for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only here in Bakerstown, but around the world. So we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, and ask your blessing and anointing upon this offering now. In Jesus' name, amen.
to introduce Kids Church. It's time for Kids Church. Hallelujah. But first I'd like to introduce our friend Clarence to come up and start the, uh, start the message. Let's give Clarence a hand. My name's Clarence Lancaster. I'm from Washington County, Pennsylvania. I'm here to give you a little backstory on uh, what we do and where we come from and how this came about. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Pastor Jack for having us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, he, there's a lot of amazing people here. You guys are welcoming and uh, it's very comfortable to be around you. Um, thank you for having us anyway. And uh, I'd like to take you back to uh, uh, Dalton Teen Challenge, Dalton Teen Challenge, which is started as a, just a, a teen thing. It was uh, only for teens. Uh, back in 1958, there was a pastor in State College, Pennsylvania. Uh, his name was David Wilkerson. He was a pastor of a small church. Uh, one night, um, he decided that he wanted to sell his TV and uh, be, pray, be, have time to pray with the Lord instead of watching TV at night. So... Um, in the midst of doing that, he was reading a, a, a magazine, and he seen these uh, seven children in New York City on trial for murder. And one caught his eye as he was looking at this picture, and uh, the anger and the, the, the spite in this guy's eye and his photograph drew his attention. Um, so he felt a calling. The, heart, uh, the Lord put a, a calling on his heart to, to go to New York City and to... Um, to try to preach for these for these children to the judge uh, on trial. Well, however, he um, he sold his TV. He went to the congregation. The congregation came up with the money. They helped him get to New York. Him and another guy, a fellow, went to uh, New York City. Uh, they tried to get into the courtroom. He was laughed out of the courtroom. He, was, he had a Bible in his hand. He was placed on the front page of the newspaper. So everybody in New York City seen this newspaper, and uh, the gangs included. Now, there was a lot of gangs back then, a lot of serious gangs, uh, and, and they were doing a lot of serious things as children. And um, However, he was laughed out of the courtroom, so he went back to uh, State College, Pennsylvania, where he's from, and uh, you know, he just, it just kept drawing him. So he kept going back, kept going to the congregation, and the congregation kept providing him with money and helping him get the money, just enough to get there uh, every time, and he, he made it there. Well, eventually, he was on the streets of New York after he got laughed, laughed out of the courtroom. He's on the streets of New York and met a, um, a head of a gang. His name was Nicky Cruz. I don't know if anybody knows who he is, but uh, he's, a, he's a head of a, um, I forget, forget exactly which, which gang it was, but he was the head of that gang. And um, they, they recognized the pastor for being on the front page of the newspaper. And uh, they had something in common because the law didn't like neither of them. He, they didn't, the law didn't want the pastor in there, and the law don't like criminals, so, you know, um, they kind of uh, clicked. And um, Nicky Cruz, however, um, he, uh, the pastor that, that uh, Dave Wilkerson met Nicky Cruz, and Nicky Cruz threatened to kill Pastor David Wilkerson. And um, he told Pastor Wilkerson, he said, uh, here, I'll tell you exactly word for word. He said, Nicky Cruz threatened to kill David Wilkerson and responded. You, he told him he was going to cut him up. And he said, you can cut me in a thousand pieces and every piece will still love you. And uh, 
So Nikki Cruz, the head of the gang, got saved uh, at, a, a, at a conference they was having out there for children. And um, after having that conference, that's what they started bringing young children is where it started at, the kids. They started creating these places. Uh, uh, it was called Teen Challenge is what it started at. And uh, they was creating it for kids, troubled teens that was uh, out committing crimes and getting in trouble and being involved in gangs. And they were bringing them to Christ is what, it, what happened. Is, you know, they were, they were coming, they were getting saved, and they were bringing them to Christ. They were giving them a safe place to live, a uh, safe place to eat. They were praying for food. They taught them how to pray. They, they taught them how to do everything. And um, they used to pray for food every day. And uh, that's how, and now it switched over to, it's now adult and teen challenge. Uh, because now they figured that it's just not juveniles that's trouble. It's adults as well. So they figured that this is this try to help everybody, ad adults and kids. So that's what they do. They have a lot of programs. Um, they, uh, it all started in 1958, but uh, that's where it first started. But they have, they have them all over the country now. It's, there's 40 in the Ukraine, uh, Ukra Ukraine alone. I'm sorry, I have to put, say that. Um, there's 40 in the, uh, uh, Ukraine alone um, of adult and teen challenges. Uh, but that's how, that's how we got started. Uh, some people say it's a drug and alcohol program. We don't consider it a drug and alcohol program. We, we consider it a, a discipleship of Christ. We are men and women of all ages, from kids to old people. Um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> From older generations to younger generations, and uh, we don't, we, they don't discriminate. They take everybody. Um, we, uh, as long as you love the Lord, they, 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 they bring you to love the Lord. You don't. A lot of people that come here don't love themselves. You know, like uh, we come there hopeless, broken, and our life is in shambles. And we come there with no hope or nothing. Some of us don't have families. Uh, we come there, and uh, basically, we're apart. We come there, and they, they, they give us hope. They, they bring us to the Lord. They, they show us how to live a, a positive, productive life. So I would consider, because it is very, very Christ-based, that um, it is a discipleship program. It's, it's men and women who love each other. We love each other. We care for each other. We help each other. If somebody comes in, we bless them. We, we give them you know, whatever they need. It's, it's a very helpful program. And it's for people that's trying to get off of drugs and get, and get out of trouble. You know what I mean? And, it's a helpful program. It helps for the laws. It helps for it helps for people that's in trouble with the laws. It helps for kids that's got drug drug addiction problems and and uh, alcohol problems. It's um, all that. Well, now that I gave you the description of uh, what we're about, all right, I'm going to give you a little um, a little uh, testimony of, of where I come from. I come from uh, Washington County, Pennsylvania. Um, actually, I lived in Fredericktown, Pennsylvania, is where I lived at. But uh, however, I grew up. Uh, with a with a father and a mother, I grew up in a broken home. Uh, my father used to abuse my mother all the time. My mother was addicted to pills. My father was addicted to alcohol and cocaine. Uh, at eight years old, um, my father had left, and uh, it was my mother raising five kids. Um, so it was kind of tough, you know. We didn't have nothing. We grew up poor, you know. Sometimes we wear dirty clothes to school. Um, that's what that's the way we grew up. But uh, it was real because I know my mother loved me. You know what I mean? And and she cared for us. Um, but uh, however, at 11 years old, I started to experiment with marijuana because I was brought down, you know, as some people would taunt you when you was younger about the clothes you was wearing, you know, things that, you know, that they didn't really know what was going on in the home, you know what I mean? And um, so at 11, I found something that, uh, that, that, that let me let loose of my, my pain, and that was uh, marijuana. And uh, that's what all started for me. Uh, I started using marijuana, and then... Uh, Slowly but surely, um, I would graduate into uh, the pain pills, and then into uh, the cocaine, and then the heroin, and then the methamphetamine. And at 18, I started um, I started an incarceration process. Uh, 16 out of the last 16 years, 14 out of the last 16 years, I spent incarcerated uh, in the state penitentiary due to my drug and alcohol use because of the crimes I was committing. A year ago, if you see me, you probably wouldn't let me in your church because. Um, I was probably there to do something I shouldn't have been doing. And uh, today, I mean, I, I'm changed. I, October 13th of 2020, I went to Butler County Jail for a crime I didn't commit. First time in my life I never committed the crime. And uh, I couldn't get them to believe me. 32 months after sitting there, um, 
I finally was believed. They ran a tape and they seen that I didn't commit the crime. I was acquitted on that case. Um, however, October 13th of 2020, when I got to that jail cell, I said, man, I see people going to church and I'm like, they're like, just pray about it, just pray. And I didn't know what they meant, you know? So they, they explained to me the God, uh, the Christ situation and I started praying to him and I told him, I said, you know, if, if you get me out of this, I know, just let them see that I'm telling the truth for the first time ever in my life. Um, I'll, I will follow you and, and I mean it. I'll stop using drugs and I'll, and I'll follow you. Um, however, 32 months after that happened, uh, I was proven innocent and I was released to a, a Christ-based program which is a discipleship. It is called a Dalton Teen Challenge, where I've been since August 23rd of this year. Uh, however, we're loving and caring the program, and uh, I love God. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. I read my Bible every day, uh, and I believe that, um, that the Lord is working in my life because before I couldn't go a day without sticking a needle in my arm or smoking the crack pipe or, or sticking methamphetamine in my arm. Today, I don't have to do that. You know what I mean? It's, I I wake up and I think about God. I go to sleep and I think about God. So I, I, I appreciate you guys letting me share. And uh, again, I appreciate Jack for letting us come, Pastor Jack for, for letting us come and, uh, and speak with some guys because I think it's very important that this message gets out in this world because we all know what this world's going through right now, you know? And there's millions of people in this world that need help. And uh, if you don't get this message out there, I mean, you know, some people ain't never going to get it. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce my brother in Christ. His name is Joe.
All right, now that I'm not super nervous. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Joe. Uh, I'm from uh, uh, Washington County as well, a little town called uh, Clarksville, uh, a little coal mine and patch. Uh, you know, my dad always taught me to, to work hard, uh, keep your nose on the grindstone, you know, and um, I kind of failed at that. Uh, the weight of the world kind of took, took me over, and, uh, you know, I fell into drugs at a young age. And uh, that's not what I want to come up here and talk about, though. I want to talk about how I was lost in my journey. And when I went to prison, prison saved my life. I was addicted to heroin, uh, methamphetamine. I, need, I was a table junkie, you know what I mean? And uh, I, didn't, I didn't know the Lord. Uh, so that's kind of the basis of that song that I played for you guys. Um, in Jeremiah chapter 29... Verse 12 is my favorite verse of all times because the very first time I ever opened the Bible, I flipped to that page and it said, in those days when you pray, I will listen to you. And uh, a friend of mine told me, he said, listen, you need to start reading the Bible. He said, that's what you're missing in your life. That's why you're lost upon your journey. So I started reading this Bible and, and I love music. I, I just, I absolutely love music and um, th the Lord speaks to me through my music. So I use my music to get away from everything and, and focus on music instead of the, the past that I was doing. And Adult Teen Challenge has really been working with me a lot. They've been blessing me with uh, the opportunity to learn a new life without without addiction. Um, I just uh, I now know that the Lord is my Savior. I know that uh, I know that the way that I was living was wrong, and uh, I made a promise to Him before I was released from incarceration that. No longer in this world will I ever hurt nobody or do anything to, to hurt anybody or anything. My goal in life is to, to spread his gospel now and to make people smile. So that's that's every day I ask anybody that I can, how are you doing? How, how's your day going? Instead of asking them what they need, ask them how you can help them. You know what I mean? And what, what can I do to help you? And uh, just submit to the Lord and, and he'll, he'll guide you along your way and life will be so much better than what what you're going through and, and he'll be your light you know what I'm saying and I read in the Bible that even in your darkest moments when when the, the truest darkness is there you're always guaranteed that lightness and all you have to do is look up and thank him for it because he will make sure that it's there every day for you thank you guys at this time I'd like to invite my friend Nate up here to talk <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So, uh, my name is Nathan, and um, I grew up around here, right over in, right over in Natrona Heights. And um, you know, um, Jesus says in John 10:10 10, 10, that the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give life, and so you could have it to the full. And before Jesus was in my life again, that's all my life was was death and was just chronic death and destruction. But um. I spent a lot of time in institutions. I've been to rehab six times, jail twice, and um, during those times, you know, you you hear a lot of tragic things. You know, people who grew up in horrible childhoods, this and that. But you know, that wasn't my case. I have a mother and father. They're actually sitting back there. That uh, they're still they're still married to this day. I grew up in a I grew up in a loving household. I grew up in the church. I went to Evangelist Christian Academy out in Sarver, and uh. I was just, I battled with the Lord for a long time, you know. It was too good to be true. I didn't believe it. So uh, I leave Evangel Heights. I go to public high school. I start smoking weed, getting into trouble. I was always drawn to trouble. I loved it, honestly. I don't know why, but sorry, Mom. But uh, I graduated Highlands High School. I went, to, I went to Penn State University. I was up there, you know. I really didn't go for education. We'll just, we'll just put it that way. But um, my senior year of high school, or senior year of college, I got hurt skateboarding, and uh, it was before the crackdown, but at that time, the doctor introduced a plethora of, of, pres of prescription pain pills, and uh, it really went downhill from there, man. I, I couldn't live without it once I, once I had it. So anyways, I graduate, and uh, my roommate of three years shortly after I graduated was murdered by, by a drunk driver, and that's where the bitterness began, man. I was mad at God. Shortly after he died, my 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 nana passed away and um i've always been a mama's boy i'm not ashamed to admit that but 
before that, I was I was a grandma's boy, man. She was my best friend, you know. When she died, a part of me died, and the more more bitterness ensued. I spent six years with a with a woman. Um, she was very mentally ill. So I was in my heart, I believed that uh, I was supposed to marry her, you know. But being mentally ill, she wasn't like me. She wasn't an addict, but. One day she bought a Xanax off of someone. He said, she, just so she could feel normal. And it wasn't Xanax, it was fentanyl, and, she, and it killed her. So anyways, after that, um, I, meet the, I, met, I met my son's mother. And uh, God blessed me with her, a beautiful child, and a beautiful home. I had everything that I had ever wanted, but I was miserable. And, as, and misery ensued, and my addiction got worse and now I'm I'm putting a needle in my arm just so I just so I can live every day and that's no way to live. But um I remember her name's Jamie and I remember when Jamie was pregnant. I was looking at God as a genie at this time. You know, I said, God, you give me a healthy son, beautiful little boy, and I swear I will get off this needle. God well God God held up the his part as as he always does. When he gave me the most beautiful little boy you could ever imagine. And three months after he was born, I ended up in jail. I, um, I was doing I was doing dope with my son in the car, and um, I could have killed him. I could have killed someone else, but God was there. But I didn't believe it at the time. I didn't want to hear it. And my mom and my dad, they kept drilling it into my head. And the more they drilled it into my head, the more resentful I came and the more I hated God, to be honest. So um, for the past 10 years, I've traveled all over the United States. I've had a wonderful job. I do children's photography at sporting events, but my best friend in the entire world, man, his name was Zachary. We spent every weekend together. Well, addiction does what addiction does, and Zach was found dead with a needle in his arm, and it was at that point I just gave up. I accepted death. I remember looking at my mom and dad and saying, I'm, a, I'm, I'm basically going to die how Zach did, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. After going to rehab six times this past October, I had nothing to lose. And I could feel something tugging at my heart. I just refused to admit that it was God because I wanted nothing to do with him. I was angry with him. Why did you take everybody that I love, but I'm still here? And that's something I battled with for a long time. So I entered Teen Challenge, and I, I was stubborn. I was bitter. Story of my life. And um, in the beginning of December, this minister came in, and I... Um, at the end of the service, he's going around blessing everybody, praying for them, right? And um, me being stubborn, I'm like, man, this guy's crazy. I want nothing to do with this guy. And um, I remember looking up at God, contemplating with him. And I was like, I basically said, all right, bro, if you're, if you're real, now is your time to prove it. And so the minister's going around, and he's, and he's blessing everybody. He's saying all these positive things. When it comes to my turn, he said, um, this kid's riddled with depression. He's broken. God do something. And it left. It's a miracle. You know, people say miracles don't happen, but I'm I'm living proof to tell you that they, that they do. And um two years ago on New Year's Eve, my son's mother was trying to nar was trying to narcan me. This past New Year's Eve, I got baptized. You know, I never thought that I would spend a New Year's Eve sober or get baptized, let alone. That was just out of my that's just out of my nature. But I did, you know. I've hated myself for a long time, but it all went away. And um, you know, for the first time in my life, I surrendered. It was the greatest choice I ever made. As the song said, the battle has been won. But um, I just want to say thank you all for letting me speak. You know, with now I want to introduce my man Tom. I'm real, real grateful for him. Thank you guys. Team Challenge Ministry Team. Uh, we go out and worship with uh, other churches, fellowship with new brothers and sisters in Christ, and uh, we do that solely on donation. And uh, we've got some stuff here in the bag, and we've also got a table set up. We've got some nice T-shirts. Keep it unfolded there. And let's see, uh, we've got handmade, hand painted, and stained crosses some bracelets and this is the good stuff here uh, 
We've got uh, coffee that we roast and grind ourselves and package it up. <laughs> and don't forget, you can't have coffee without a mug. <laughs> so, uh, oh, what else? Almost forgot. We have the cross and the switchblade, which is a condensed version of the David Wilkerson story. And again, everything's back on the table. Uh, all donations are welcome and uh, greatly appreciated. And uh, God bless you all for letting us come out here and worship. And uh, let's praise God for this beautiful sunny morning. Again, thank you all. Thanks. So real quick, if you have your Bibles, I just want to share a few thoughts with you. Again, it is an absolute honor and a thrill to be here at Bakerstown Alliance. I'm super pumped, super excited. Can you tell? And I didn't take my Ritalin, so I do apologize. There is a table in the back, and one of the things I just wanted to mention was uh, we have things that we make available uh, for sale and literature. There's uh, information back there about Teen Challenge, which is a worldwide faith-based program around the whole planet. Thank God for David Wilkerson, Nikki Cruz, the cross, 
and the switchblade. Some of you saw the movie years ago with Pat Boone and Erica, or Erica Chavez and Pat Boone. So the stuff back there, some of you in this room have family members and loved ones that are on drugs, alcohol, in jail, they're running, ducking, hiding. But how many know God loves them? God wants to touch them just like he touched me and you, amen? But there are also cards back there. If you want to partner with us, just fill this out. We'll put you on the mailing list. If you want to become a supporter, a donor in some way, fashion, or form, fill that out. Get it back to me, and we'll start to network with you. That's all I'm going to say. But do me a favor. Do pray for Teen Challenge. Do continue to pray for the guys you just heard of and, and, and met and have seen uh, right here this morning. Amen? So it's amazing what praising can do. That, that's the third one. It's amazing what praising can do. Psalms 147, verse 1. We're going to look at the word in just a moment. Psalms 147, verse 1. First of all, I'm not as good at praising this guy as Jack. So let me get that out of the way. Okay? <laughs> Psalms 147, verse 1. It's amazing what praising can do. Can you say amen? I've got my, my uh, name tag in case I get lost. <laughs> I'm going to teach you a song. We'll do it. Well, you know, we'll do it right at the box with you. How many are thankful for this box? Isn't this thing cool? Whoever came up with this is genius. Because first of all, you got a seat.
I just want to share this verse and run with it. It says in Psalms 147, verse 1, how good it is to sing praise to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. Now, watch this. How good it is to praise God. How pleasant and fitting. We were made to praise him. The Bible says if you don't praise him, the rocks will praise him. I don't want a rock getting over on me. How about you? <laughs> How pleasant and fitting to praise him. Watch now. Praise declares who's in control. Praise exercises our faith. Praise strengthens us. Praise gives us hope. Watch this. Praise helps us to see things through spiritual eyes. Praise teaches us to overcome things with a thankful heart. Because praise and thanks go hand in hand. Praise also gives us assurance that God will have his way. We all know casting Can you say amen? amen? Let me know this. Praise doesn't always change your circumstances, but praise changes you. And God's more concerned about you than your circumstances. God will use your circumstances to get to you. It's amazing what praise is. Let me know that praise helps us to realize that behind every struggle, every battle, every bit of drama, every issue, every disappointment, every problem, there's a spiritual reality. Doesn't the Bible say that a cheerful heart is good medicine? I mean, I've been on, on the road for 30 years traveling and preaching and met a lot of people. I, I've met some Christians. They're scary. <laughs> I mean, you would think they were baptized in vinegar. I'm just... Look, we don't praise our problems. We're not praising our bank account or the lack of it. We're not praising how we feel. We praise God who never changes. We praise God who's worthy of our praise. Let everything that has breath. What do you have? You have breath, you qualify. We never, we, 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 we praise God who is worthy of our praise and who is good always. Say amen. I read this the other day as we close out. Listen, the secret is not surviving the storm, but learning how to dance in the rain. The secret is not surviving the storm, but learning how to dance in the rain. You show me somebody that praises God with a lift is up. I want to show you someone that's going to make it. I want to show you someone that's going to be sustainable. Because they did. Because they trust in the Lord. And they did in God's hands. No matter what. Because you can't change God. You're not in control. FYI. We praise him. This is the faith walk. Somebody say amen. amen. But the secret is not surviving the storm. But learning how to dance in the rain. Health issues. I'm going to dance. You need a job. Keep dancing. You've got relationships. A marriage. Kids. You've got finances. Discouragement. Depression. Stress. Anxiety. Keep praising him. Watch this. You can't praise him too much. You can praise him too little. But you can't praise him. And my, mind you, anybody can praise God when things are going well. Come on. But the true test, the challenge is praising him when things aren't going well. And so we wrap up with this, Acts 16, 25. You don't have to turn there. Acts 16, 25. You know the story. It says about midnight. Let me know God moves at midnight. I'm just getting going at midnight myself. I told the students I'm not a morning person. Hallelujah. I could work at Walmart all night, work at Cheats all night. My wife is the opposite. She's in bed by 7.30. Come on, honey, what? <laughs> but it says about midnight. How many know God moves at midnight? How many know God's always on the move? It says about midnight. Paul and Silas were doing what? Praying and singing. They didn't have a worship team. They didn't have hymn books. They didn't have a song book. They didn't have Pastor Jack with all this equipment. And I don't even know what this is. But it says about midnight, Paul and Silas were singing and praying. And suddenly, not only does God move at midnight, but I'm going to know God has those suddenly moments in your life. It says suddenly 
There was a violent earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. And once all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. Come on, somebody. So I got three thoughts real quick. Number one, foundations were shaken. How many know when you praise God? I learned a long time ago, God loves you too much to let you stay the same. When you praise him, foundations change. Secondly, it says doors open for Paul and Silas. How do you know when you praise God? Doors of opportunity open. Doors of relationship. Doors of growth. Doors of wisdom. Doors of discernment. Doors of the blessings of God. Doors that I don't even know about will open in your life when you praise him. And then thirdly, change. Paul and Silas. Chains came loose. Ladies and gentlemen, when you begin to praise him, doors open, foundations shake, and chains of discouragement, fear, anger, depression, regret, doubt, insecurity, loneliness, all that stuff that the devil tries to just wrap around us. When you praise him, chains break. When you praise God, bondages are broken. When you praise God, fear is cast out. When you praise God, him, worry and anxiety will leave. Attitudes change. Hearts begin to soften. I don't know how to sail. Anybody sail? Anybody know anything about sailing? Come on, work with me. Somebody say that. getting out there. See, when you come to church and begin to praise them, things change. When you begin to, you're out there, you get you open it all up, you get all the, and it's just moving it. He's blessing it there. He's directing that. He's telling it to you. He's doing things in life. What's happening in life? Because you're going to praise him. Because you're going to praise him. Because you're going to praise him. Pastor Jack's going to come, I think, and kind of close us out in a minute. I think he's going to do a song. But what I want to do, I know we've gone a little over, and I get that. And please, please forgive me, but what I want to do is this. I don't know what you guys know to do. You're here all the time. But I do know this. I've been doing this long enough to know that people are hurting. Marriages are in trouble. So
Before we leave today, there's going to be some opportunities for you to bless them with another love offering. So as we leave, let's make sure we bless Teen Challenge. And let's give them a round of applause right now. And thank them. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is Um
recognizing what you've done for us, God. The love that you've showed towards us, Father, by sending Christ to die on the cross for our sins, to set us free from our sin, Lord, and to fill us with new life, life that is abundant, Lord, found in only you, Lord. Lord, I pray for each one here this morning, Lord, that they would not leave here the same, God, that you, Holy Spirit, would fill them with your love and your joy and your peace and deliver them from anything that might prevent them from following you fully, Lord. We are so desperate for you, Lord. We need you more than ever, God. Jesus, fill us with your spirit. Empower us to be your effective witness as we leave here this morning, Lord. Fill us with the joy of the Lord that is our strength to overcome sin and desire to live fully for you, Lord. This is the air I breathe. I breathe. God bless you, everybody. You're welcome to linger, fellowship, and worship. But remember, bless them as you leave. What a great ministry. Let's give them a round of applause one more time. Thank you, Richard. God bless you.